talking about PS Lab, so I'm with that and this YG, in case uh, y'all don't know. Okay, so how okay, so PS Lab, how did it start? It started uh, from this uh, C Lab, C Lablet. So it's actually the same, uh, it has similar functions to what the current PS Lab has, uh, which is actually uh, to, e to emulate um, oscilloscope and some other science instruments as well, which you can find in science labs. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, we f we took it ahead and we actually made a open source version ourselves. So this is actually the first uh, version. It's uh, it has a uh, components on two sides. Uh, this uh, taking the form of Arduino Uno uh, because it's small. Uh, that's yeah, Pocket Science Lab. Yeah. So uh, we brought the first version and we went to a few events uh, around, and of course we gather feedback to uh, so that we can further improvise this. So after that, uh, we've. Uh, um, further discussion with um, the community and stuff. Um, yeah, so the one of the feedback to bring the course down was to actually put all the components on one side. So uh, yeah, so after that we adapted the mega factor. So uh, this is what what you can see now, uh, and it's here. Okay, so um, we actually uh, support this by actually we have a placeholder of uh, for ESP Wi-Fi at the back, which uh, is currently empty. And of course, uh, some small enhancements uh, compared to the Uno. Uh, yeah. So uh, for for example, for easy access, there's actually a QR code at the back for you to scan to go to the website. And of course, uh, more uh, to cater for more sensors to use concurrently, with uh, tools such as uh, yeah. We shall go on further. Um, yes. So as you can see, so this is actually the rough uh, timeline that how PS Lab uh, came about. Yeah, so it started from the C Lablet, which was the first version, and of course, uh, came out with the first uh, Uno version of the hardware. And then uh, to support it, to show the data, we actually have to create a desktop app. And uh, of course, it's not Pocket Science Lab uh, if it's not portable. So then followed by the Android app, and of course, uh, to support the wireless transmission of data, so you can view it from uh, various places. So of course, uh, a web app in the end. Yes. So uh, how do you use it? Yes, um, so we actually have a few, quite a number of instruments within the Android app and the desktop app itself, which actually, uh, the Android can be downloaded from the Play Store and the desktop app can be uh, forked or downloaded from the GitHub repo. Yes, so um, yeah. So this is how the desktop app currently looks like. Uh, you can see. Uh, that it, it actually is almost has the same functions as a real life oscilloscope uh, with all the same similar controls and of course uh, we try not to make it too uh, different from the hardware the original oscilloscope itself so that people won't have a uh, problem adjusting to it yeah and of course um, oh, a little bit out of place uh, yeah so we actually also have the android app so you can see this is actually a uh, uh, we are, these are the two uh, oscilloscope and multimeter of course uh, we actually have more instruments uh, uh, which actually leverage on the built-in phone sensors such as the accelerometer, uh, accelerometer compass and of course the barometer and uh, depending on some phones as well yeah uh, I believe uh, yeah so you can see oscilloscope and of course uh, we what's different is that uh, PS lab is able to output up to five volts Right, yes. So, uh, which is a slightly higher uh, output compared to uh, different other bots as well. Yeah. So, uh, with higher voltage, of course, you can do more. Yeah. So uh, there's uh, there's three power source where 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 you actually can control the different. Yeah. Of course, multimeter, logic analyzer. These are the few common tools that you actually can find in a typical science lab in schools or institutions as well. Yeah. So, uh, so actually, of course, uh, we produced it uh, in China and, of course, uh, partner with uh, Fren Hoa in Germany as well. Uh, you can see Mario there, Mario's face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, so they actually help us to uh, give us suggestions on how to actually improve the board, uh, such as, like, the placing of the components and the structure of the, the circuit, uh, the built-in circuit and stuff, yeah. So of course, uh, I w this is me. Uh, yeah. So this batch was recently produced. Uh, I think two two months ago. So I went down to Shenzhen and of course, uh, uh, yeah, to see the first batch come out from uh, fresh from the oven. Yeah. So of course, uh, yeah. Uh, of course, during the production, the there's a lot of problems. 
Yeah, so these are actually some of the problems. Um, yeah, uh, going to and back is actually a quite a hassle thing because especially if you are trying, uh, if you can't speak Chinese because their perception of, their translation is a little bit different from uh, ours, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so of course, uh, one of the key is uh, remanufactured keyword. Uh, this is a keyword that they always bring up. Uh, that's actually a huge factor of cost. You actually can see, the, for example, uh, uh, a component, uh, let's say a processor, it's $1, right? Sometimes you actually can see a processor selling half of that price, 50 cents, and the producers actually don't tell you that it's remanufactured, or in other words, refurbished. They just give it to you as though it's new. But these problems, uh, you, will, you will face problems after it, produce com it comes out from factory while you're using, probably you will, the lifespan might be halved or even lesser, or you will... Probably, probably will produce a spot board, which will actually uh, increase the cost as well. So yes, so these are some of the stuff, and of course, uh, design issues. Uh, the micro USB didn't fit the P, uh, the the board by itself, and uh, yeah, and the pin headers wasn't so so that straight. Uh, we actually had to get a bracket very last minute. Uh, yeah. So and yeah. Uh, yeah. So like for example, this are uh, this is a sample of actually a remanufactured part. So you actually can see one of the compo uh, the red boxes are the cracked components. This is actually very small. It's like, um, what do I explain? Probably about this size. I, I'm not sure if you can see. Uh, it's about this size. Each component, it's very, very, very small. Uh, yeah, basically, it's uh, this is the capacitor, the yellow capacitor you see here. Yeah, so it's about this size. So uh, you can see how small is this. Uh, that you actually, if you produce in large batch, you actually won't notice it at all. Yeah. So uh, yeah, don't always find the cheapest one. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, you can read uh, like some of the stuff to actually keep the cost down. Uh, more common stuff like resistors, and uh, you actually can use a, a made in China brand, which yeah, and yep. But if your circuitry has high precision measurement, mm -hmm. then um, won't you replace all these cheaper no name brands? You lose. Them. Okay, yes, okay, so things like uh, resistors, right? Okay, so uh, when you are communicating with the, the producers, they actually know which are the cheap parts, which are the good qualities, uh, made, uh, made in China, low qualities one, they actually know all these different, and of course, this is, uh, the pricing for this is actually also different. So, uh, 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 what was this brand? I can't remember one of the brand. So it's actually, for example, uh, one of the more common uh, Taiwan Taiwan resistor brand. They actually can find on uh, easily on uh, many d devices such as mobile phones as well. Yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, finding a trustable produce uh, producer is also an issue. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Uh, all this. Uh, so, what's next? We actually. Uh, we are going to conduct more workshops, uh, uh, not only in Singapore, in Vietnam, Germany, and uh, some other places as well. Uh, yeah, so uh, schools, uh, yeah, we, we actually have been going to schools as well to actually talk to teachers uh, on the usage of PS Labs. What's the advantage of it? And of course, uh, one of it is to actually bring, uh, uh, bring in class learning closer to the students. Yeah. So they actually don't need, to, for example, one instrument of oscilloscope could be costing a few thousand dollars, right? Uh, a 14-year-old student might spoil it unknowingly. So this is actually one way to actually uh, mitigate a lot of risk to the lab which is actually cost much lower as compared to a full-scale oscilloscope. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, so how I go? So what are we going to do next? Um, yeah, so actually uh, we've brought some PS Labs uh, from th the the batch from Shenzhen. Uh, we actually are selling it, uh, each for actually for 68 and uh, of course the kit here you see here is actually 178. Uh, yes, uh, it sounds like a marketing pitch, but yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, so you can actually, we are actually, uh, we want uh, feedback from the community to ask, to, to know what are the instruments that you would like to see to actually integrate with PS Lab so that we actually can develop further on it as well. And uh, of course, uh, to, to cater to different uh, age, age range, uh, some, for example, uh, students or kids who actually can't uh, program for PS Lab, uh, they actually can, uh, maybe they want to have some fun, they actually can uh, try to make their own experiment with PS Lab as well. Uh, so, 
yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, we are actually looking to uh, have a distributor as well. So actually, we sold out uh, our first batch in Japan. So uh, yeah, within uh, one and a half days. So we actually just sent them the second batch for them to sell. Yeah. So of course, uh, with this, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, so I uh, so there's one PS lab going around. You can have a look, uh, or you want to have a look uh, more. Uh, you can come here so we actually have a kit so there are some sensors like uh, we actually uh, dust sensors so it's compatible with or uh, not sorry uh, gas and of course a uh, mic microphone sensors and moisture sensors and etc so this it will work in conjunction with the instruments in the app so uh, some of the uh, extra some uh, functions they are not uh, stated in the slides like uh, there's actually a recording function in the app uh, when you use the instruments, you actually can export the data for further processing. Yeah. So yes, so we actually just uh, su uh, submitted uh, our proposal uh, ago, a while ago. So um, yeah, so please uh, register on GitCam and vote for us to speak. Yes, so you can find out more about PS Lab and uh, uh, how to make it better and how to utilize it and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, these are some of our upcoming events that uh, PS Lab will be appearing. Uh, of course, uh, these are some of the, not, could be more, but yeah, so these are the more common ones. Yes, so yeah, uh, if, yeah, you can download our app now if you scan the QR code, you want to try. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, do follow us on our social media as well to keep track of the latest updates of Pocket Science Lab. Yes, with that, I end this. Thank you.